Hello and welcome to the Book Tasters, from young adult to tween and everything in between, the Book Tasters serve up the tastiest reviews of today's and yesterday's greatest stories. I'm your host, Timothy J. Burdick, and I'm joined by my co-host for the week, Ethan. Ethan, how are you doing today? Good. Fantastic. So, uh, I hear you brought some facts to bring with us today. Why don't you okay. share your first one? Um, did you know that the amount of licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop is 364 licks? <laughs> I remember growing up, there was an infomercial, a commercial about um, how many licks it would take to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop, and there was this owl. Um, and it, it was, I can't, I can't remember the animal that was given the actual Tootsie Pop, but they gave, they gave it to the owl, and the owl said, one, two, and then he ate the whole thing, three, and he said it was three, <laughs> and they gave him the stick back to the animal. Um, but how many did you say it was? 300 and how many? 64. Now, did you do this on your own? Did you do, experiment this or did you? No, I don't like Tootsie Pops. I just looked it up. Nice. But I found out more than one thing. So. That's pretty cool. We might have to do a classroom experiment on how many licks it does take to get to <laughs> the center of the fun. Tootsie Pop. Now, I also wonder, is it just a lick and then you get to the center of it, like on one side? Or is it like a, you know, a swab where you put it all in your mouth and then take it all out that i don't know we might have to do a couple different yeah. experiments that'd be fun <laughs> that would be fun all right next fact what do you got um did you know that red green yellow and orange bell peppers are all the same type of pepper they're just in different periods of ripeness i did not know that but it makes sense because they all taste the same eh, some taste better than others really you think so yeah uh, if you were to take the spectrum of different colors of bell peppers, green, yellow, orange, and red, um, which one do you think is, the, is your the tastiest one? I don't know. I don't really like peppers, but may, probably the orange, maybe. The orange? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's interesting whenever we eat food that is a, not a normal color, like orange, <laughs> we kind of have a idea in our head that this is going to taste really, really good, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, what do you got next for me? Um, may, when did, did you know that... It is impossible to hum when you hold your nose. It's impossible to hum while you hold your nose. All right, let's give it a shot. You go first. That's true. You're actually not humming there, are you? You're kind of no. just going to try. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that counts as humming. No. no. That is hard. Okay, yeah. I, everybody right now currently, if you're listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube, go ahead and try it and then send us your results in a quick video. I'm interested to see what you look like <laughs> when you do that. <laughs> All right, next one. Um, the world's biggest tire producer is Lego. They make approximately 306 million per year. Of the little tire things? Yeah, they no still way. Have tires. So. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. How many did you say they could create? 306 million per year. Holy smokes. But they're so tiny. I can imagine the yeah. product is, is a lot smaller so they can be able to create yeah. more within a year as opposed to a regular size tire, which probably takes a lot more time and effort oh, yeah. and energy. I did not even know that. That's, a, that's an interesting concept. All right. Yeah. Next one. What you got for me? Um, the DEA organization is actually real. The DEA? Yeah. Oh, okay. And what does the DEA do? Um, it is the Drug Enforcement Association. Associate, association. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they, like, try to, because there's a lot of drug cartels, and they try to stop them. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's true. Um, my wife is originally from Juarez, Mexico, which is right across the border from El Paso. It used to be a very big um place where drug trafficking would occur because it's right on the border. And so when we went to go visit uh, her family down there, we used to always have to be very careful with who we spoke with, where we went, because you never quite know when that's going to, when something like that's going to, you know, pop up. Yeah. All right. So you were talking about the DEA, the organization being real. Um, so you brought a book with us today that tr talks a little bit about DEA-like things. Um, could you tell us a little bit about it? Um, so there's this kid named Ricky, and his dad used to actually work for the DEA. And he always thought that his mother died in a car accident. But when he heard the DEA talking with his dad, he found out that the Leon drug cartel actually killed his mom. Oh, dear. What's the book called, if you don't mind just starting with that? Sparrowhawk Red. Okay, so Ricky here um, is trying to figure out, you know, how his mother died. That's yeah. one of the things that, that's one of the central conflicts of the book, is yeah. he's trying to discover the truth behind um, his mother's mysterious death. And he finds out that his dad worked for the DEA then, too, as yeah. well. They both did? Well, he knew that, but okay. he didn't know how his mother died still. Okay. And so, obviously, there's a whole bunch of, um, I would say there's a journey, right? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the journey? 
Um, so after he found out, he had like this feeling inside that he should do it for his mom. And he knew that the, what the DEA wanted his dad to do, even though his dad denied it. So he wanted, so he had the idea to go do it for his dad, mm -hmm. behind his dad's back. And what's the thing that the DEA wants his dad the to da do? The DEA wanted the dad to go back and get the, there's so the, there's these radars to track the drug trafficking. And he wanted the dad to go back to go to one of the planes in the Leon Drug Cartel's airplane that they have, because they think they have the biggest one. Oh, so he, so Dad was supposed to go back to to I'm assuming Mexico. Yeah, it's um, in Mexico. And he was supposed to go in 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 a enemy f uh, plane. Yeah. Um, so like a spy basically to yeah. be able to go in. Okay. And get the radar. Ah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Because the radar fell into the hands of the drug cartel. Yes. Okay, interesting. And so this is what uh, Ricky is trying to do on his own because his dad denies yeah. the fact that he's actually involved in this, but Ricky no, knows better. No, because the dad doesn't want to do it. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. And so Ricky wants to do this job for his dad, not only for his dad, but also for his mom. Yes. Okay. Can Cause... you tell me a little bit more about that? So, because the drug cartel has it and he wants to get it because if maybe if the dad actually didn't, did it the mom might not have died because the d or the leon drug cartel killed his mom so mm -hmm. maybe if he got it they wouldn't have killed her okay. so he wanted to do it like for revenge for his mother okay that makes sense and so there's a lot of interior conflict in this book granted there's yes. a lot of exterior like crossing the border and as i recall ricky is a pilot as well right yes so he, he knows how to fly and how old is ricky i think 13 okay because he's in seventh grade so but his dad's been teaching him how to fly since yes. a very young age. Okay. And so he takes this plane, and he heads over to Mexico, right? And yeah. a lot of things happen when he crosses the border. Um, but he does go through a lot of these interior conflicts, these things that are kind of driving him uh, in interiorly, right? Can you give us an idea of what one of those interior um, conflicts would be? Like maybe what if he did it, can't get the plane, and what if he can't get back to Arizona where he lives? Because mm -hmm. he rips up his ID mm -hmm. yep. and hides it. He's kind of a he's kind of a stubborn uh, type child. Isn't oh he? yeah. <laughs> if you were to give him one character trait, um, stubborn would probably be on top of your list. Probably and adventurous maybe. Okay. Because that, that takes a lot of guts to do that. Would you consider him brave then? Yes, very brave. Okay, very good. So now you've completed the book already, so yes. we're not going to give too many spoilers, but I know that you brought uh, the book with you today, and you wanted to read a little bit of the book itself, so yes. I'm going to hand that to you while you find your page and get your bearings. Um, this is a great book for uh, young adult readers, especially middle grade readers as well. It introduces... Uh, Unfortunately, a tale as old as time in the United States history, which is drug tar cartel um, and transfer of drugs from Central America and uh, South America up to the United States. Um, it's obviously a central issue in our politics, but this is a very good way of understanding that, those concepts, especially if you're young, uh, because it's a story, and it's an entertaining story at that one, right? Yeah, it's very entertaining. All right, why don't you give us a, a, a book taste? Okay, um, so... Get me another beer, shouted the gruff guard who had shot the machine gun. I think the fillings in my teeth are melting. More cans popped open, and Ricky heard satisfied, satisfied guzzling. He waited and hoped, waited and hoped. Finally, one of the men burped. Oof, I think the salsa had melted my guts. I'll finish my beer in the outhouse. You don't like company, someone snorted. The rest laughed. Ricky stretched up to peek through the cab windows of the truck. One of the workers stepped outside the door and strode off at a half trot. He angled away from the truck towards an outhouse on the far side of the horse corrals. Ricky had not noticed a small building earlier, but he was grateful how for its distant location. Patiently, he waited. I think it melted my guts too, growled a voice. If Juan isn't done, I'll throw him out. The second worker ran outside of the door and headed for the outhouse, hands gripping his stomach. He'll have to sit on his lap, shouted the gruff guard after, fleeing, after the fleeing man. Before the second man reached the outhouse, the shortest guard raced from the shed, running with a stiff leg gait. His machine gun bobbed up and down as he bounded along. His desperation made him rigid. Ricky felt tension growing inside his stomach as he waited. What if the big guard with the 
farmer overalls hadn't eaten any of the food. Maybe it was so fat that the arrow reed had no effect. Come on, Ricky begged silently. Almost at once, his request answers. Eho, bellowed the last guard. There's fire in my belly. Swearing loudly, the burly ox weaved out of the building. He ran knock-kneed, swinging his machine gun with one hand, the other hand clamped tightly under his britches. Down by the outhouse, a fight broke out. The second man yanked open the door and hauled the first worker off the seat and shoved him stumbling into some prickly pear cactus. The worker bawled with pain as he struggled to get his feet to continue to the shore. The third man hoped up and hopped up and down, howling at the sky and pleading for his turn. The largest guard ambled into the fray like a bulldozer. Open the door and get off, he screamed. My turn. He fired his machine gun into the air to make his point. Hurry with the grunt, he pulled out the other guard off the seat. The two started wrestling in the dirt, throwing punches. The first guard's pants remained down, hobbling his ankles, while the two barked at the workers crept inside and jumped on the valued hole. You lizard screamed the biggest guard breaking off the fight. He jerked and pulled on the locked door. Ricky jolted into action. He jumped into the ground and raced for the shop door. His cramps leg tickling, tickling, and the last he saw over his shoulder was two men pushing over the outhouse. Occupant and all, Ricky ran directly to the pane and kicked blocks from under the tires. He tried the door, it was locked. He glanced about frantic in the far corner of the small desk. Ricky ran and jerked open the drawers. Nothing, think, he told himself. Slow down and think. Interesting piece. So obviously we have Ricky here trying to escape from the clutches of guards, and he obviously hatched a certain plot to make sure that they would be writhing in pain in some way. Can you give us a quick uh, background of how this came to be? Um. So... Ricky, the reason they're all fighting for the outhouse is because, so there's this thing called a taco runner, and Hernandez is usually a taco runner, but he hurt his foot, so Ricky had to replace them, and the taco runner is the people who get the food for the drug cartel people, so he went to the place and got the food, but Soledad, a friend that helped him while he was there, told him that arrow reed is something that makes you have a lot of diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So he put it in the burritos and <laughs> gave it to them. <laughs> and then he was just waiting for the moment to run into the plane. So Sparrowhawk Reddit is a perfect book uh, if you really enjoy adventure and obviously a little bit of humor. Here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Ethan, thank you so much for joining us. This is a book that we'll definitely be putting on our podcast. If you'd like to visit our website and find out more episodes and listen to more episodes of The Book Tasters, head over to thebooktasters.com, T-H-E-B-O-O-K-T-A-S-T-E-R-S.com. Ethan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.